everyone, this video will hopefully provide you with some useful tips on how to successfully space out your revision to help you prepare for your upcoming mocks and exams. The idea of spacing is essentially a technique which is used to make sure you don't leave too much revision until the last minute and helps make the most of your revision time. Across your subjects you will have an awful lot of information that you will need to remember. So we need to bear in mind that to actually commit something to memory it takes a lot of time and also repetition. So hopefully during this video we'll look at some tips and techniques which will help you to plan effective revision. So research has been conducted which suggests an optimal gap that should be left between revision sessions where the same content or material is revisited depending on how long is left until uh, the test. So for example, if you had a test or exam in three months time, they suggest leaving two week gaps between uh, revision sessions on that material. So it doesn't mean revise once every two weeks, it means revisit the same content every two weeks. So the theme really throughout this um, video and this, this research is that if we want to actually commit something to memory in our long-term memory so that we, we can recall it in an exam, it does take time and it takes repetition. And if we can build in lots of opportunities for that repetition, then there will be some real benefits to doing that. So this is the Ebbinghaus forgetting curve and it's a really good infographic for highlighting how much information we actually lose with time. So if we were to learn something initially in a lesson, let's say, over a period of a few days, the majority of that information will naturally be lost. Our brains are designed to do that and it's only through revision and repetition and retrieval that we can strengthen that learning and move that information into our long-term memory. You can see in this graph that every time the information is reviewed, the gradient of the curve changes and more and more information is retained every single time it is reviewed. Successfully spacing out your revision can have lots of benefits. Research proves that spreading out your revision over a longer period of time in small chunks is much more beneficial and effective than spending one longer session cramming all of that information uh, nearer to the test or the exam. That time in between the revision sessions actually allows your brain to forget some of the information and then relearn it, which is a process which allows that information to transfer into your long-term memory. Some top tips for how we can start to bring this idea into our revision is plan and set a timetable with actual periods of time which are assigned to different subjects. Have these good habits and a, you know, a structured revision routine rather than something that just happens randomly as and when the mood strikes. Try not to procrastinate, sometimes easier said than done, but if you are somebody that thinks a lot about revision and how much you've got to do and worrying about it, please just get started. Make a plan, work out the timetable, we'll look at how we can do that on the next slide, but rather than worrying about it, please just give it a go because as soon as you get into it and you get started, you will feel much, much better. As well as spacing out revision, we should also consider interleaving, which is the technique of alternating between different content uh, across a subject. So, for example, if you plan to revise, let's say, history on a Tuesday um, after school, rather than just purely focusing that one hour on one topic, interleaving suggests that you should revise small chunks across the different concepts within history, maybe you know between the different topics that you have, which will mean that your brain is continually changing focus between uh, different concepts, which again is something that is, is really helpful for memory. It doesn't always just have to be different concepts within one topic, uh, within, within one subject. It could be that you choose to revise science after school on a Wednesday and you can do small sections across chemistry, biology and physics and you know continue to do this week after week, 
repeating and uh, revisiting that information, but continually interleaving or alternating between the different topics. So this tip here, so quality, not quantity, and to do little and often and mix it up every day. So keep these sections of revision short and mix it up and keep revisiting that information. So you may be thinking, this all sounds useful, but how do I put this into practice? So you have been given guidance previously on how to construct a revision timetable based on your availability on weeknights after school or at weekends, fitting around your schedule and your extracurricular activities. So if you maybe have a one week or two week plan of every Tuesday revising, let's say, history and French, every Wednesday is your science afternoon and so on. Once you have that timetable, you can then think about breaking this down to help fit in some of that um, interleaving and that spacing that we've mentioned. So one of the things that I've always really liked to do when um, I've ever had to revise for something is to break down a subject into smaller chunks like topics. So for example, here with um, chemistry revision, you can break the subject down into the different topics. So for example, bonding, our acids, bases and salts and metals, and that would continue through the other topics. And then I would put those down the side in one column. And then along the top, I would fill this with my planned active revision activities. So these could be different for different people. Uh, whatever revision that you've planned, so that could be reviewing those knowledge organisers that you find on the WJC website, it could be the blended learning activities also on that website, it could be creating this set of flashcards and then the subsequent flashcard quizzes that you do with that set, it could be exam questions from the physics and maths tutor website that you may want to revisit on more than one occasion. So fill that top row with all of those different activities that you plan to do for that subject. Then once you have, let's say, reviewed the knowledge organiser, you will tick that off and you write the date. And then maybe also in that same session, you have also created a set of flashcards. Then you can see when you last looked at that content and you can, using the research that we mentioned earlier, think about a appropriate space of time before you then revisit. So let's just say we're going to think, okay, a week later, I want to revisit this and go through the flashcards. And then what you can do is just pencil in future dates. So let's just say if it is a Wednesday that you conduct your uh, chemistry revision or your science revision, you can just pencil in dates that you think, right, I want to have made sure that I do or I complete these exam questions by this date and then once you've done that you can fill it in and tick it off and it just allows you to see really clearly how much revision you've actually done for each of your subjects. The purpose of jotting down the dates is just to allow you to track when it was that you last revisited a particular subject area so that you can make sure that things don't get forgotten and left to the last minute. You know, you might pencil in a date and then that may go by and then you might look at it and think, oh, I, you know, I, I planned to do this last week. That needs to be my focus. I need to make sure that I go over this and I review this and I do a quick flashcard quiz on this topic before I move to the next one. So you could have one of these pages for each of your uh, GCSE lessons, which will just allow you to like I said, keep track of what you have done, what you need to do, and will just allow you to think about the spacing, the time that you leave between your revision sessions, revisiting that content, as well as, you know, prompting you hopefully to interleave your revision sessions. So don't just spend two hours on the bonding topic. You would want to mix it up flick between the different topics in chemistry and maybe even look at a different subject within that session as well. So I hope that was useful for you. Please do get in touch with one of your teachers or you can come and see me, Miss Williams, in room eight anytime to discuss revision. If you do feel like you need a little bit more support with how to go about planning your revision, please do get in touch. We are here to help. Thanks, everybody. Bye.